My question to you is, there are many misinformations and confusions among the people in social media regarding your visit to Qatar during FIFA World Cup 2022. Some say that you were officially invited to FIFA World Cup and by, particip and by participating to this event, you went against the teachings of Islam. According to them, you had to avoid this invitation since FIFA World Cup is an event of modern Jahiliya. So is this news true that you were invited in FIFA World Cup and you accepted the invitation and went to Qatar and gave dawah? Jazakallah khairan. Sir, please make dua for us. You are my hero since my childhood, since 2008. The question posed by a brother from Bangladesh or brother from West Bengal, India, is that there are many information, there are many misinformation, many confusion, that people are saying that I was there during the FIFA World Cup and I was invited and it is haram to attend or go to Qatar for the FIFA World Cup because it's modern Jahiliya. This is the opinion. As far as the opinion regarding can a person take part in football, this was answered by me a few days before the World Cup, a few, sorry, weeks before the World Cup. I think it was in the month of September. And I said that there are some scholars who say that, you know, playing football or playing professional football is haram. And I gave the opinion that playing football per se is not haram. And even playing professional football, as long as you do not do any haram activity, which is again the Sharia, or you do not miss any of the further activity. So if a person plays football or plays professional football and does not miss any of his further activity, like uh, playing uh, Paying salah or paying zakat or doing the psalm, fasting in the month of Ramadan, if he doesn't miss any of his faraid activity and doesn't indulge in any haram activity, so football per se or any game or any activity, if it's not against the sharia, if you do not involve in any haram activity or do not miss any of your faraid activity, it's not haram. The reason given by scholar was you may miss your salah, you may do this, these are thus if it happens. So it's very much possible that a person can play football and not miss any of his further activities. I know many, I know thousands of Muslims who play football and don't miss their salah and don't miss their psalm. They don't indulge in any, in any, any, any haram activity. Yes, when you go to professional football at the lower level, it's very easy to avoid any haram activity and miss the faraid. When you go on a higher level, as I mentioned in the answer, that on international level, there are chances that they may ask you to advertise for alcohol or for an interest-based bank, which may be haram. Of course, you can avoid this. You can say no, but you require the courage. So, it becomes more difficult to avoid the haram activity, but it is possible. So, if a Muslim plays professional football and doesn't indulge in any haram activity, does not advertise for the alcohol or for a conventional bank, and doesn't indulge in any haram activity, doesn't miss any of his faraid, then football per se is not haram. And I gave this long answer, I don't intend repeating it again. And regarding anyone attending, you know, going to Qatar, as far as I'm concerned, yes, I was there in Qatar during the World Cup season. During the full month of the World Cup, I was there. I was there earlier, more than a month earlier than the World Cup started, and a month later, so I was there for a few months in Qatar. Now, can anyone point out to me what haram activity did I do in Qatar? For your information, let me tell you that I did not attend a single football match during the World Cup, FIFA World Cup 2022. Yes, I wanted to attend. Not that I'm a fan of football. I'm not a fan of football. But I wanted to see the organization. It's a World Cup international event. And I have this flair to attend, to see the management, to see how it's organized. I wanted to know that how well do they have the audience in the stadium. And I know because we are involved in this activity of having the largest English Islamic conference in the world, where we, have, where we had for several years the peace conference in Bombay. And the gathering of the 10 days was more than a million people. And the last day for my talk, there were 300,000 people. If you compare to the largest stadium in Qatar, the Lusail Stadium, it had a capacity of 80 to 88,000 people. 
that is if you compare to the last day of the peace conference in my talk there were more than 300,000 people so it is about more than three and a half times the audience of the largest stadium in the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 and the largest talk that I gave in India was more than a million people live in one sitting not on the social media not on the satellite channel live the largest gathering that that Allah blessed and with Allah's help you will to conduct in 2012 in Bihar Kishan Ganj more than a, 1 million people live in one sitting and if you count all the eight stadiums of Qatar during the World Cup it had a capacity of less than 400,000 people that means the largest gathering that we had and we conducted as an organization is more than a million people in one sitting which is two and a half times more than all the eight stadiums of Qatar World Cup in one sitting so it was my desire to go and attend and see how they organized but I was a bit careful you say ehtiyat because I being a die I didn't want anyone to lay any allegation so I personally did not attend a single football match though I had access to tickets of all almost all right from the opening ceremony till the end the quarter finals semi finals finals I had access I had passes I had tickets but I purposely did not go to avoid anyone laying any allegation I'm not saying that going is wrong but I being a die and many people follow me I was careful because I knew what was going to happen but I want to be a bit careful that I should not be caught on the wrong foot so as far as I am concerned I did not attend a single of any of the matches during the World Cup FIFA World Cup 2022 which took place in Qatar because I know that all the earlier World Cup had many things haram but Qatar Ahmed took, took care and saw to it that they tried to keep it as Islamic as possible I am not saying that Qatar was 100% they held the full World Cup as per the Islamic Sharia there were drawbacks but comparatively if you see normally what the World Cup takes place in other parts it took place earlier Qatar did a fantastic job and they were able to demonstrate an example so as far as the World Cup is concerned yes I went for doing Dawa in Qatar I stayed there for a couple of months during the World Cup season and I had many ideas many suggestions which I shared some were taken by them some were not and we did Dawa we were, we were able to convince mashallah Allah gave Hidayah to many non-Muslims Alhamdulillah and we took this opportunity to, to do Dawa and of course we could have done better but whatever was possible in the resources that were there at our disposal we took this opportunity for doing Dawa why does anyone say that it is haram yes there may be certain acts if you say during the World Cup that in the match may have been objectionable objectionable that the reason I took precaution and didn't go for the matches <coughs> but otherwise living and doing dawa to the viewers to the visitors it's good alhamdulillah and why did anyone say that doing dawa is haram if they say this is modern jahiliya that is their thinking and if you have an opportunity to do dawa to the jahil people it's good that is the time that you have to go and take advantage of it if you compare and see what Qatar has done they did a fabulous job in the World Cup and gave an example to the world that there is a Muslim country that can hold an international event which is the second largest international event after Olympic the number of people that gather together it's the second largest which is held every four years Olympics is the largest second largest is the FIFA World Cup that is the football World Cup and we are aware that most of the times that the World Cup is held 
there are umpteen number of haram activities taking place. Normally, there may be thousands of haram activities that take place. If a normal Muslim would have done, maybe he would have had hundreds of haram activities. As far as a die is concerned, he cannot indulge in any activity even if it's 1% haram. We don't claim that we are 100% pure or we don't make mistakes, we don't do minor sins. But as a die, we cannot intentionally do any haram. But as a general Muslim, if he has to organize, he will do hundreds of haram. Qatar on the other hand, Alhamdulillah, I like to praise them that they did a very good, beautiful demonstration how, how, how Islamic country should hold a World Cup, international event. I'm not saying they were 100% as per the Sharia, there were drawbacks, but they were very few. On the whole, they did an excellent job. You can give a talk on that and time will not permit me in this question and answer to talk about that. I would just like to mention a couple of things what they did which was phenomenal which no one else had done in the world and no other country will have the courage or the guts to do it. Number one was they said we will not change our culture, our religion for these 29 days or these, these 29 days just because the foreigners are coming or just because we are holding international event like World Cup. And they were very strict that they said we have our ethos, we have our values, we have our religion, you are most welcome, but you have to respect our views, you have to respect our religion, you have to respect our, our culture. And they were very clear that you may have your views, you are most welcome to follow what you want to follow in your home country and they were very, I would say strong. And they were very, you could say adamant, very sure that they will maintain the Islamic ethos. And they made very clear that people are welcome, but you cannot force your values, which we consider as sin or haram. And one most important thing that they showed to the world is they said that we have our own views as far as LGBT or LGBTQ or LGBTQI plus is concerned. And we know everything has changed now and the groups that support the LGBTQ uh, lesbian, gays, bisexual, transgender and cure that is question cure and I is other things and plus it continues meaning anything which is not bisexual. So they said that you may have your views but when you come here you cannot show your support for these things which we consider as wrong. And they were very strong in it. They did not allow anyone to flash the rainbow flag or to wear a rainbow band. And they were strict in this. And they demonstrated that you have your values, what you believe you can keep it at home. But when you come to our country, Islamic country, they were very staunch on that. And they demonstrated that. And the second thing what they did is that just two days before, they consulted with the FIFA committee. And they said that we will not we will not allow the sale of alcohol in the football stadiums. And then they had a contract with an alcohol company, the Budweiser. And of course, if two days before they stopped the sales, it is breach of contract. So Qatar asked them that what will be your revenue? What would be your sales? Forget the profit. What would be your sales in all these 29 days? Because they were allowed to sell beer or alcohol in the World Cup. So they said about $70 million. And Qatar said, fine, we will give you $70 million. So where is the question of loss? So Qatar gave $70 million to Budweiser and told them to keep the alcohol. We don't want the alcohol. You can keep it. Or don't get it here. Imagine they have spent 70 million dollars for a work which is alhamdulillah that they gave a demonstration that first time in the history of fifa world cup that alcohol wasn't sold in the stadiums and no one could object because the contract they said we will pay you the complete revenue forget the profit what you expect to sell in all the stadiums 
in 29 days we will pay you before the World Cup starts and they agreed to pay and the matter was settled and many things they did time will not permit me that they were able to demonstrate the Islamic aspects and as I said I'm not saying that 100% of the World Cup organizers were asked for the Sharia. There are pros and cons. I'm only discussing the pros and the cons are there, but they were less as compared to the pros that were there. So we take a lesson that they had the guts and you could see in the stadium, first time in World Cup, you know, before the ceremony starts, whether it's the opening or the, or the finals, people are praying in Jamaat, in the stadium, outside the stadium, every stadium had a, a prayer hall. People were praying even on the streets in large numbers. Mashallah, it was a beautiful demonstration. And they thought to it that the people weren't obscenely dressed. It is the first World Cup. When you see the World Cup otherwise, and those who saw live on the television, I didn't see it, but those who saw live, they told me that there was a difference between the World Cup held the previous years as compared to this World Cup, that people were dressed up, not in that very obscene way. And Alhamdulillah, most of the foreigners, most of the Westerners, most of the non-Muslims that came to Qatar, they had a beautiful sample of the religion of Islam. And many of the Westerners, many of the foreigners, they told, many of the ladies, they said that we have never felt so secured in our life like we have felt in these days of the World Cup. In our own home country, we are afraid of being teased, of uh, being, you know, people whistling at us. And here, late in the night, it is so safe. We didn't find anyone teasing us or whistling at us, all respectful. So it was an example of how a Muslim country, yes, if a very strong person would say objection, I do agree that there were alcohol sold in some of the areas like fan zone, etc. So these are the few negative points, but as a whole, the positive aspect that you know many people told, oh, you know, Qatar during the World Cup will be worse than Dubai, would be worse than Paris. You will find everywhere, you know, completely there'll be uh, fluidness. There will be people drunk, there will be people playing havoc and Alhamdulillah, Qatar took care of that. People told me that hardly they could see any drunk person on the street. Maybe there were some people, but it wasn't as freely available. Alcohol was only available in the five totals and some of the zones, not like how it is available in the other World Cup. And people, mashallah, this is the, there were hardly any rate of crime during World Cup. It is the World Cup with the least rate of crime. And it, the first time in the history when the UK fans, when they visit, they are known that there are large number of the UK fine fans are known to be violent. And a large number gets, large number of UK fans, they get arrested. This was the first time that not a single UK fan was arrested during the full season of the World Cup. So you hardly found any crime, you hardly found any arrest, everything went smoothly and Qatar took care that they had security, etc. So it was a fabulous demonstration where they had tours, the non Muslims go to the mosque and there were, mashallah, many places where dawah could be done to the non Muslims and it was a good opportunity. And we did whatever we could do in our limited capacity to see to it that the message of Islam is given. So why should someone say it is haram to do dawah during World Cup? They are sitting at the home, they don't know what happened. Can anyone point out to me one act that I did which was haram in the World Cup? So the thing is these assumptions and it is wrong for a Muslim to lay an allegation against any Muslim without knowing the details. Alhamdulillah it was an event, but the cost was fabulous. The largest that any country spent during all the previous World Cup was $14.8 million spent by Russia in the last World Cup in Moscow. Qatar 
there are different statistics. Some say more than 200 billion. The largest was 14.8 billion spent by Russia in the last World Cup. The statistics are more than 200 billion. Some say more than 260 billion. One figure told more than 300 billion. So what they spend between 200 billion to 300 billion dollars, it's a fabulous amount. It is multiple times more than all the World Cups put together. This was Qatar. Allah gave them the fund and they felt like spending it. Yes, of course, given the choice, I would spend in a different way. But if they spend this money and they felt it, that they want to spend to present Islam, it is their choice. And whether it could be spent better or not is second, at least you cannot say that what they spent, they made an effort to give a demonstration to show to the world that Islam is a peaceful religion. It's not a religion of terrorism as most of the people think it is. So much so that they started the inauguration with the recitation of the Quran. They had a handicap in the opening ceremony to, to recite the Quran and give the translation. Imagine the Western world talks about giving human rights, talking about human rights, taking care of handicaps. Not a single World Cup did you have a handicap being the main person in the opening or the closing ceremony. Here you had, Alhamdulillah. So it was a beautiful demonstration and I really appreciate the guts that Qatar had and they were able to present Islam in a beautiful manner in one of the largest international event to show to the world that even a Muslim country can do it and they did it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and, and give them the highest reward in this world and the akhirah and may Allah forgive whatever faults that they have done and may Allah grant them the unity of